I uh, came here last year, didn't didn't speak, but came and participated. And, you know, uh, it's always tough to follow Mr. Kidd because he's a, a lot smarter than I am, but I do know I look a lot better in this way. You know? <laughs> so, no, it's, it's a pleasure. We actually work with services, I think, work very closely together on, you know, what we're doing in the way of energy efficiency and renewables. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, renewables and alternative fuels, but, you know, it, it, what I got to say is, is we do have a pretty aggressive program on efficiency as well, or effectiveness. You know, on the shore side, we're trying to drive consumption down, and saves costs, makes it easier to, you know, you know, when we try to work on those resiliency efforts and integrate renewable power. And on the operational side, you know, we, we consume a lot of fuel. You know, the Navy operates forward where it matters, when it matters, and we got to drag that fuel with us wherever we operate. So anytime we can reduce the amount of fuel we consume, you know, that's obviously a good thing because that gives us more combat capability. And that kind of gets to what Mr. Kidd was talking about. And so to us, the energy program is really not about being green. Even though I have the environmental title in my, my, you know, my job as well, you know, to me, our effort is really focused on capability, resiliency, flexibility, and giving the Navy choices and options of what we do in the future. So on the operational side, the big focus is, you know, alternative fuels. And I think, uh, you know, many people have probably seen, read, heard, you know, Navy's taking some, you know, harpoons over the alternative fuels. But to me, it's absolutely the right thing to do. You know, if you look at the amount of fuel we have to transport and where we have to move it, and frankly, where we get it from, you know, some of those places don't necessarily like us. So anything we can do to, you know, decrease the amount of petroleum products, you know, add to some price stability by maybe having some domestically produced or some other country produced alternative fuels, to me that's a good thing. And so our program is largely focused on testing and qualifying, you know, those petroleum products that, you know, the alternative world is manufacturing. And for the first time, we've actually changed some of our military specs for some of the fuel we use, ships and airplanes, um, our two biggest assets, that allows for two different pathways of biofuel production. So the Defense Logistics Agency has the first contracts on the street, you know, that could offer us bulk biofuel. And it's got to be dropping because we're not going to change our engines and stuff. We also do a lot of, you know, interoperability with our partner navies. So, you know, that uh, Royal Australian ship or that uh, you know, English ship, they may take fuel from one of our boilers at sea. So we're working with those other partner nations, too, to try to, you know, get them aware of our alternative fuel program. And we have some statements of cooperation with some other countries where we're sharing data and information on that. So a big effort on the operational side for us, obviously, is the alternative fuel biofuels program. On the shore side, you know, I'd say our focus is very much like the Army. You know, we tend to operate maybe in nicer places in the Army. You know, we got those great coastal locations and, you know, tend to have more of a connection to a large city or a metropolis area someplace. But what we need is, we need something other than just power off the grid. You know, we need some flexibility so that when the grid does have a flip, a spike, or whatever, you know, we got to have resiliency. It used to be our bases were, hey, the ships would sail, the subs would, you know, submerge, the airplanes would fly away, and the base was the place where the families stayed. But in today's technological world, you know, we count on those bases back in the United States for things like, you know, maritime ops centers, command and control, um, you know, ISR, flying ISR missions out on the base in the United States. So the criticality of those uh, electrical systems and reliable clean power, you know, to support our data centers and some of those other key facilities, you know, has really made us look hard at what do we need to do. So we assess all the buildings. What's the critical infrastructure? How do we protect it? How do we make it more resilient? A large piece of that is integrating renewables, you know, into the grid to help support that for us. We've got uh, one gigawatt effort going on. Um, you know, the Navy has recently stood up a uh, renewable energy program office whose sole purpose is to focus on, you know, finding opportunities and structuring those contract deals so that we can give one gigawatt of renewable energy. The goal is to have those deals at least effective by the end of next year, so that's pretty aggressive. Um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, hey, the Navy's all in on energy. You know, 
whether it's liquid petroleum products, whether it's efficiency, or whether it's uh, you know, renewable energy, they all got a, you know, got a role in our portfolio because we're a pretty energy intense organization. So I appreciate what all you guys are doing and uh, I applaud the efforts of you, know, you guys pushing and advancing your technology because we're actively interested and we're watching. So thank you.